Once upon a time, not so long ago, a little adventure took place on a tiny leaf on a small tree. On this tiny leaf was a very small caterpillar that was, on this very day, opening its eyes for the very first time. She was very small and delicate. She was probably the tiniest creature in the garden. It's all so beautiful here, she thought. This must be the most beautiful garden in the world. The little caterpillar realized that she was terribly hungry. She sniffed the air and smelt the wondrous perfumes of the trees and flowers. But one scent was the best of all. That was the scent of the leaf. It was delicious. How sweet life is! thought the little caterpillar and chewed and chewed. One day, when the caterpillar was eating her breakfast leaf, she heard a mocking voice from above her head. My, oh my, oh my, my word! You certainly know how to eat. Looks as though you're going to finish off the whole tree. Do you know no limits? Limits? What is that? <coughs> I beg your pardon. <clears throat> Do you think you're the only bug in this garden? Or what? What's a bug? Silly sausage, don't you know? Look at me. I'm a ladybird. I am a beetle. Look at my beautiful red shell. It's the most beautiful in the entire world! Yes, it's very pretty. And under the shell are my wings, look! How lovely! How did you get such nice wings? Sweet beetle juice! I was born with them, of course! Those who haven't any wings are bugs! But those of us who do have wings are higher insects! And we higher insects are the masters of this garden, and you bugs have to do as we say. And I'm saying, stop eating or you'll be sorry. I've been keeping an eye on you. You eat enough for four, and have become bloated and ugly. It's an outrage. You mean I'm ugly? You're the ugliest thing in this garden, or anywhere else for that matter, but I don't have time for this chit chat. As the duly appointed chief prefect in this garden, I command you to eat no more than Wally for day and do as I say. Now, the little caterpillar found no joy in watching the flowers, the trees, or the sky. Everything is beautiful but me. She didn't dare eat from fear of the ladybird. Still, she ate steadily after the sun had set and no one could see her. Even though the caterpillar tried to eat less than before, she continued to grow and get heavier and the leaf started bending under her weight. And one night, while she was sleeping, it happened. She couldn't see the flowers, or the trees, or the little house. She saw only the dark sky, far above the tall grass. Oh, what will I do now? I'll never make it back up into my tree. <coughs> Where would you be going, little one? It was a big old worm that appeared out of the ground. I'm 
something. I'm sorry that I fell here and disturbed you. I'm so fat and ugly that my leaf couldn't hold me anymore. I'll go. There, there. There's no hurry. We'd rather let back people. Why don't we just have a little chat, eh? I'm just a fat, ugly caterpillar. Why would you want to talk to me? Whoa, now. Why, you're no fatter than me. Mm. It's different <laughs> with you. You're a worm. They're supposed to be a little chubby, but me... I eat too much and become fat and bloated. And who says that you can't also be pleasantly plump? Hey, maybe you're a princess under a spell. And one fine day, the spell will be lifted, and then you'll realize that you are and you have been a princess the whole time. The caterpillar was comforted, and she wasn't quite as sad as before. But nobody likes me. I don't even like myself. Oh, no, no, no. You can't talk like that. You have to like yourself. Just think if the sun wouldn't respect itself and would stop shining. That would be awful. Yes, quite dreadful. Then it would always be night and never daytime, and all the flowers would die. No, you have to think like the sun. She doesn't let anyone tell her how to behave. She is as she is. And that's why we all love her. Thank you for being so nice to me. Mm. It's quite a change from the ladybird. Yes, well, I thought she had been bothering you. But you see, not everyone can have wings and fly amongst the flowers. Then we wouldn't have anyone to take care of the soil or the roots of the trees. Just imagine if I had wings. Eh? That would be ridiculous. Yes, completely absurd. Now listen carefully, my dear. Everyone has a role to play. And everyone is created exactly as they should be. And no one is better, even if they have wings or a beautiful shell. What really matters is to be kind. The sun had risen high in the sky when the caterpillar bid farewell to the wise worm. He directed her toward a large dandelion from which she could climb back into the tree. But it took her a long time and it was nightfall when she had finally reached the top. She crawled into the flower just before it closed its crown for the night. This is so warm and cozy. What are you doing here, you ugly thing? Uh, a monster. What? A monster? Me? I'm just an honest bee, and all the flowers belong to me. You have no business here. Now, buzz up. My, oh my, oh my. What is this? Have you started eating the flowers as well? No. This is open rebellion. No respect for private property. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dear madam, uh. I'm sorry for this disturbance. 
But this thing is the greatest glutton in the entire garden, or anywhere else for that matter. A downright dangerous creature, but luckily it can only crawl. Only low lives can't fly, mm. and only idlers won't work, mm. rolling around in the private property of others. Mm. I'll sting you! It so happens that there weren't just flowers and trees in this garden. There were also moss-covered stones. And there lived an old spider. All day long, she would sit still in her web, waiting for someone to drop in. she wrapped in her silky thread and saved for later. Yes, she was old and cunning. a nice morsel that lasts until autumn. Can I help you in any way, my friend? Who are you? Me? I'm nobody. <laughs> Just an old spider who hasn't got long to live. Such is life. Ah, oh, but where are you going, my little one? I'm trying to get back home to my little tree, with those tasty green leaves on it. I won't bother you any longer. <laughs> I'm getting old and tired and don't have anyone to talk to. Why don't you stay the night? And tomorrow I'll spin you a strong piece of thread so you can climb all the way up into your little tree. What do you think about that? Luck, luck. The caterpillar thought her offer very kind. Poor old spider. She thought. Even though she is grim and ugly, she is good deep down. And didn't the worm say that it was most important to be kind? Spending the night isn't too much to ask, if it makes her happy. Thank you, I'd like that. Uh, then come closer, my dear, so I can see you better. Like my poor eyes and hearing have gone very bad. That's it. That's it. Yes, yes. That's the way, dear. Ooh. <laughs> I'm stuck! Yes! Now I've got you, my little friend. Help. Now I'll bind you in my thick thread and eat you! I can hardly wait to have a bite! Ah! 
The sun shone high in the sky, and its rays reached the rocks. But on the roof of the little house, a thrush was looking over the garden. Is that what I think it is, my lovely? What do you see, my love? Isn't that a caterpillar the sun is shining on down there? You can see better than me, my love. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen such a large morsel since my late father brought my brothers and me that huge worm when I was still in the nest. You have such a good memory, my love. Great eagle wings! I was right! It's humongous! Look here, fella! It's mine! I saw it first! You may have eight legs and all, but you're no match for me, old hag. It's the first time in my life I've heard a lousy spider tell a thrush what he can eat. Get lost, or I'll pack it to pieces. But when the thrush returned with the caterpillar in its beak, there were two chicks that had hatched out of their eggs. And the thrush was so proud that he completely forgot the little caterpillar. From my heart through every feather Feelings take away when I see you Sweet little songbird, sun in my sky You are my lovely forever With this beak I built our love nest I am yours Made from tricks of best selection because she got stuck on a leaf and hung there head down. After all she had been through, she didn't have any strength to get herself free. And she was so tired that she fell fast asleep. Now it was a good thing that she'd eaten all those leaves. Yes, she was lucky that she was so fat because she slept and she slept and she slept. Night fell, and day came, and night fell again, and then came another day. She was in a deep and mysterious sleep. And she didn't look like a caterpillar anymore. She looked more like a bag hanging from a leaf. And inside, something very strange was going on. The 
Then suddenly, three ants came marching along. But all this marching finally woke the caterpillar. She stretched and twisted and tried to break free. so deeply that she'd forgotten everything that had happened before. Oh look! There's a little tree! Oh, I feel for this tree! I wonder why! Oh my! Oh my! Well, hello there, miss. Pardon me, we haven't met before. I'm a ladybird, and though very important insect, I'm but a humble bug next to you. Sweet beetle juice. Oh, how beautiful your wings are. Such splendor has never been seen in this garden, or anywhere else for that matter. Perhaps we could be friends? I know everyone in this garden, and I would be honoured to introduce you to all the higher insects. What do you think about that? It was as though she knew this voice, but she couldn't recall from where. But what was it that the ladybird said about wings? <gasps> She could hardly believe her eyes. She was no longer a caterpillar, but a beautiful butterfly. And all at once, she remembered everything that had happened before. Princess! I knew it! Now you are free and your spell has been broken! Princess! Do you remember me? Do you remember what I said? You should shine like the sun. And now you are free from your cocoon and you can what? fly through the sky. Uh, I hope uh, your highness doesn't bear a grudge. I had no idea you were a princess bound by spell. I just thought you were a low like bug. Oh, you foolish creature. This suit teach you not to pick on others. My earthbound philosophy is to treat everyone kindly. Because you can never be sure whether those you meet in this life are just ordinary bugs or spellbound princesses. You're just worming! Don't be too hard on the ladybird. Mm. What is past is past. Mm. Now I want to try out my new wings. Oh, she's so beautiful. Yay! Now I am no longer the fairest of them all. And who says it's so important to be beautiful? What matters most? Is being kind. Oh my, oh my. I think you may be right. This is how life was meant to be, the butterfly thought, and flew back and forth out of the sheer joy of being alive. Because that's how butterflies are. They don't know how to dig through the earth or spin a web or do anything but fly carefree in the sunshine. 
And that's exactly what the little butterfly did. And she'd never had such a wonderful day.